Um, I do have one call to the public speaker card. If anybody else would like to speak at the call to the public, the cards are in the lobby. If you wouldn't mind just filling one out, you can bring it up and give it to any one of us before the call to the public. So with that, I'd like to call the governing board meeting of Wednesday, October 25th to order. It is 6.30 p.m. Lisa, roll call, please. Hi, Mr. Craig. Present. 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 Thank you. And we are honored tonight to have our MHSJROTC, Junior Rep ROTC, mm -hmm. to start uh, presenting with the colors and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Gentlemen. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Almost Great made job, it. guys. Now that's how we should be starting practice? our meetings. Did Absolutely. They did, yeah. Yes. Almost. Okay. Adoption of the agenda. Do I have any motions or amendments? Motion to adopt is stated. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And that brings us to the call to the public. I actually get to read it today. The procedures, um, okay, so members of the board may not discuss items that are not specifically identified on the agenda. Therefore, pursuant to ARS 38431, action taken as a result of public comment will be limited to directing staff to study the matter, responding to any criticism, or scheduling the matter for future agenda. The board requests that all comments be limited to three minutes or less and that the public refrain from the use of speech or language that is offensive or inappropriate pursuant to board policy KFA. And so I have one speaker card, uh, Gabby Potter. And Gabby, please pick the mic up and hold it close so that everybody can hear. Thank you. Hi, uh, good evening. Um, Sisters, moms of veterans, and part of our mission is to honor um, the veterans at home and abroad, abroad and uh, also to promote patriotism. So one way that uh, to honor and that we would like to show our respect to the veterans this year, we are pre planning the first veterans parade, and it's going to be November 11. 9 a.m. from Leading Edge, I'm sorry, from Legacy Traditional School to Leading Edge. It's going to be a mile. And then um, we're going to have a flag raising ceremony and a lunch, free lunch for veterans and their families at Leading Edge. So we want to invite uh, students, community to participate on the parade. And then also we would like to invite everybody here, the board, to be our guests. And we're gonna have an area in the review stand uh, where we would like you to be part of. And um, so we are really excited and hope to see you there. We also have another event that we do every year and Terry is the person that heads this event. So he's gonna give you a little bit more information. Thank you, Gabby, and I'm uh, from the American Legion Post 133 right here in Maricopa. And the weekend before the parade is our an third annual Veterans 5K run, one mile walk, and pancake breakfast. This is one of our major fundraisers for the year, so we can support 
some of the programs in the community, like our ALICA program, which sends students from the schools up to Flagstaff for leadership training in law enforcement. Also, we have sent five of our uh, students to uh, Boy State and two to Girl State this year. And we also support American Legion baseball right here in Maricopa. So we hope to invite everybody to come out. You don't ha necessarily have to run. You can walk a mile. But everybody can eat pancakes. <laughs> Thank you so much. And for those ones, like Terry said, um, that just want to come and support us with e breakfast. And we are asking for a donation of $5. And that if we are not profit, so we, you know, we rely on in uh, fundraising so that um, we were really fortunate last year to sponsor probably about uh, 30 students from Maricopa uh, to, to attend all these programs. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, just you said the weekend before at what time? Uh, sorry, thank you. The registration starts at 7 o'clock in the morning and there will be a flag raising at 8 and the pancake breakfast starts at 8.30. Perfect, thank you. All right, I don't have any more cards, so we'll move on to the superintendent's report. Dr. Ch Chestnut. Thank you, President Coutre, members of the governing board. We are going to start with Rotary Students of the Month, so I'll turn it over to Alma Farrell and Joanne Ortega. Okay, as always, I would <laughs> like to first of all thank Dr. Chestnut and the board to allow Rotary to recognize our students. We feel that it's very important to recognize our students, and this has given us a great opportunity to do this. I'd also like to say at this time that we have a, uh, a new sponsor to help us with the recognition of our students. And a big thank you to Henry Wade for his sponsorship to help us continue this uh, on, a, on a monthly basis during the school year. Uh, I would like to explain to the students that the, they have a coin in your packet when you receive it, and it's the four-way test. The four-way test is very important. This is why. For many decades, Rotary Clubs and Rotarians around the world have used the four-way test as an instrument to develop respect and understanding among peoples. How the test works is indicated by the Chicago Rotarian who developed, developed it. He suggests that you memorize the four-way test and then formulate the habit of checking your thoughts, words, and deeds with it. The four-way test is now being used successfully around the world in business, government, and schools as an effective measuring stick for conduct. It is a guide for right thinking. If memorized and constantly applied to relation with others, it will make a definite contribution toward more effective and friendlier relationships. If you get into the habit of checking your thoughts, words, and deeds against the four-way test, the experience of others has shown that it will help you become happier and much more successful. From the earliest days of the organization, Rotarians were concerned with promoting high ethical standards in their professional lives. One of the world's most widely printed and quoted statements of business ethics is the four-way test, which was created in 1932. This 24-word code of ethics for employees to follow in their business and professional lives became the guide for sales, production, advertising, and all relationships with dealers and customers and the survival of a company. It was adopted in 1943 as the four-way test of Rotary. So what is the four-way test? The four-way test is of the things we think, say, or do. Number one, is it the truth? Number two, is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? 
And last but not least, will it be beneficial to all concerned? This information is very important, and especially for, for everybody, but for the students, because when you apply for the scholarship at the end of this school year, it will all be focused on the four-way test. I would like to acknowledge the students' parents, teachers, and administrators, and thank them for supporting their child and students in their education. Our high school student, Diego Villarreal's parents are Carlos and Maria Villarreal. Welcome. The next student that we have present is Sarah Earl, and her parents are Mr. and Mrs. Buddy Earl. And I would also like to acknowledge the staff who took the time to honor these students. Ms. Gorley, Ms. Galzik, Ms. Collins, Mr. Pollock, Mr. Abel, and Mrs. Celaya. Based on that, the first student that I would like to recognize is Diego Villarreal. Can you please come forward, Diego? Diego is a Maricopa <coughs> High School senior, and he's the son of Carlos and Maria Villarreal. He's the October Rotary Student of the Month. He has a 3.861 GPA with honors as a member of the National Honor Society, where he is in charge of the nominating organization, part of the uh, National Honor Society, as well as being involved in the book and media club and extremely active in many facets of his church where he is volunteering as a youth pastor assisting with community home visits. His guidance counselor nominated him for this award. She, re she reports that she admires his diligence to do his schoolwork and his family as well as being respectful and the kind deme demeanor that he has. Several of his teachers commented on his outstanding character. One instructor said, Diego is a pleasure to have in class. His work ethic and perseverance sets the example for peers to aspire to be. His psychology teacher said, Diego is an exceptional student and great to have in my class. And another instructor spoke highly of his outstanding character on and off the campus as well. Rotary congratulates Diego for being an outstanding student and future community member. Congratulations, Diego. Our next student is an eighth grader from Desert Winds Middle School. Sarah Earl, can you please come forward? As I introduced earlier, her parents are Mr. and Mrs. Buddy Earl, and she was chosen to be the Rotary Student of the Month for Desert Winds. Her instructors also had great things to report about her, such as she is a very helpful student. She always checks in to see how she can be of service to her school. She has a wonderful sense of humor and is a pleasure to be around. Sarah is the type of student every teacher hopes to have. Not only does she excel in each area of subject area within the blended learning program, she goes above and beyond teacher expectations for a student. Her work ethic is an inspiration for the other students in the class, and she often assists in building a true learning environment. She takes the time to go out of her way to help classmates with their assignments as well as mentor our younger students. Her extra effort shows through in all assignments and her work is proudly displayed around the classroom. She's also a member of the Desert Winds Volleyball Team and the National Junior Honor Society. She is a true example of Tiger Pride. Rhody congratulates Sarah for being an outstanding student and a future community member. Congratulations, Sarah. And those are the only two. Thank you again for allowing us to do this and for everybody who acknowledged them.
Do what? <laughs> Congratulations to Rotary Students of the Month, and thank you to Rotary for those presentations. A few other things to report on. It's very exciting to be able to talk about this slide because state law says that if you have passed an override, you have to give a brief annual update to the community on how those funds are being spent. And this is very general, but uh, very proud to uh, announce that for 2017-18, our projected revenue in the override budget, our M&O override, will be 3500000 Our projected expenses are the same. Uh, the cost for the 50 additional certified staff that we were able to hire this year is $3 million. <coughs> Second thing we said that we would do with those funds is purchase instructional technology. We've purchased 595 laptops, 17 carts, and we've hired one IT staff person. Then we have a remaining budget of $100,000, and we are in the process of spending those funds, uh, ordering up the professional development that we need, some of the extra equipment that we need to make everything work, as you can imagine. And we'll give a more detailed report uh, as the year goes on, but it's very exciting to be able to have this back as an agenda item. Uh, another in interesting graph is uh, we sent another all-time enrollment number on uh, enrollment count day on October 2nd. Our head count in preschool through grade 12 is 6,884 students. So it's kind of exciting to see that number up over 1,000 students since 2012, and, uh, and uh, it's, it's a wonderful uh, situation to, uh, just to see the enrollment continuing to grow. So it does present some challenges, and I think we're rising to those challenges, but um, it's very exciting to see those numbers, and it'll be interesting to see what happens the rest of the year. It's hard to say. Uh, typically, we top out in October, November, somewhere in there, but History may be changing, and who knows? Maybe this number will continue to go up uh, each month. But I'll keep you informed on that. Uh, a couple other things to report on. On October 4th, I made the second annual presentation with the Maricopa High School Drama Club. I uh, also gave an MUSD uh, about a 10-minute overview, more like five minutes, because uh, the projector wouldn't work on uh, things that are going on in MUSD. But uh, the students did a marvelous job and kind of did an all-star uh, all hit parade of... Uh, mainly uh, numbers from uh, musical performances over the last couple of years, and uh, province uh, people in attendance enjoyed it, so it was a good evening. Also, uh, in case you hadn't heard, on October 16th, we, had, we made administrative changes. Uh, Rick Abel is now the acting principal at Maricopa High School, and Thad Miller, acting principal at Maricopa Wells Middle School, and you can see from these pictures, they're very happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was uh, at both schools today uh, talking to them and uh, just visiting, and uh, good, they're having a good day at both schools. Uh, they're both doing a really nice job, and I appreciate their uh, willingness to take on those new roles. On the 18th, I had two parent superintendent meetings. You know, I used to call them coffee, but then I forget <laughs> to bring the coffee. It's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> no, when I did bring it, nobody drank the coffee. And, you know, so I thought, I'm just going to quit calling it a parent coffee, and we'll just call it a parent superintendent meeting, and uh, had a good discussion with the people there, uh, talked about letter grades primarily, and gave an update on the other good stuff happening in the district. Attended the Maricopa Economic Development Alliance board meeting on the 18th that same day, and uh, this is a pretty exciting project. You may have read about this in our newsletter. I think in Maricopa covered this as well. Uh, we have new bus stop arm cameras on 10 buses, mm -hmm. I believe. Nice. And we have the software. It's actually a motion picture that will kick in if somebody runs one of these stop nice. arms. And unfortunately, this happens. And yeah. uh, this was one of those concerns and complaints that we got every year. And it kind of seemed like we got more each year and uh, safety first, right? So we felt like this would be a very good investment. We were, we've been working with uh, Maricopa Police Department. Uh, Mr. Beckett and Mr. Laguna have kind of taken the lead on this. So we're going to keep working through this. And uh, we just think it'll be a good safety measure um, for our buses. FOR Maricopa will be open for business soon at Santa Cruz. Uh, they still have to get uh, certified by the health department and I think they're working on, we have to get a better hot water supply. We certainly have hot water in that building but our hot water standard is much lower than what they're required to have. A few other bugs like that uh, but Mr. Rausch has been taking the lead on that and uh, I think they're close 
to being ready to open. Uh, they will distribute food uh, after school hours. Um, mm -hmm. And we have worked out a schedule that will not uh, conflict with school activities at Santa Cruz. Uh, we know there'll be other issues we have to work through, but we'll work through those and uh, it's a temporary situation. Uh, they're building a new facility, as you probably know, so uh, we're, we're helping them out and I think this will be a good, a good situation for them. They're very excited about it. I actually have a new picture today because we are making progress at Ram Academy. I want you to notice those beautiful ramps and uh, that co excellent concrete work. I believe our staff did the concrete work, is that right, Mr. Rush? Uh, I should have taken a picture of the, uh, I believe it's called the Fire Riser building, although it's more like a shed, a shed. room. It's more like a room, yeah, a closet really. Uh, at the end on the outside of the portable, yeah, you have to have one of those. So our crew built that as well. It's gonna look better as soon as we get in there. We're gonna put down granite and landscaping, Mr. Roush assures me, but uh, we are getting very close. We are hoping that uh, maybe this week we'll have a certificate of occupancy, maybe. Uh, we had the fire inspection today. Yes, so we are making real progress, and uh, it's going to be fun to get into that building finally. Also, something I think we've talked about, but I never had a good picture, uh, and that is uh, last year and this year, uh, Mr. Roush and Suzette Moe have uh, worked to make some cafeteria improvements at Maricopa High School, and it looks pretty cool if you look closely. Uh, it's not just the standard, uh, you know, flat rectangular tables that are pretty You're standard round. in cafeterias. We got some high tops, yeah. we got some oval tables, and when you combine that with the outdoor seating that we have, and when the weather gets nice, the open garage doors, and uh, it makes a nice environment for lunch, and very attractive. And uh, on the, on the, I believe this is on the, uh, what would this be on the south? southeast side of the cafeteria, that big concrete pad, mm -hmm. our crew poured that pad, right? So it's one of several outdoor eating spaces with some nice shade, uh, not to mention the giant uh, middle courtyard with the uh, canopy over it, but it really does make a nice inviting atmosphere for lunch. And you, I took this picture today, you can see the grass has been reseeded and uh, the yellow <coughs> tape is still up, but uh, that courtyard always looks beautiful and really right now, is as the green grass is coming in, it really looks cool. So appreciate the efforts being done there to keep the high school looking great and inviting. And that's all I have. Great, thank you. All right, governing board member reports. Mrs. Anderson, we'll start with you. Sure. Okay, a couple things, well actually more than a couple. But I found um, in the newspaper that there are $5,000 grants available for Arizona teachers, and I didn't know if teachers had seen that, so I wanted to kind of put a shout out there. So it, what it is is um, the Fiesta Bowl Charities. It's called Wishes for Teachers, and you can apply for those for K-12 public or charter school teachers. It's called wishesforteachers.org. Um, teachers can always use $5,000, so go for that. Um, a couple of other things. I did go to the Powder Puff football game on Monday night. <laughs> Hysterical. Um, great pictures on Facebook if you have a chance to go there. Uh, my son was one of the cheerleaders and the halftime Beyonce show was hysterical. hysterical. So you got to check it out. These kids are amazing. It was for breast cancer awareness and uh, it was really great to see all the kids show up. Um, it was a fundraiser for them and uh, the boys supported the girls and it was just, it was a great time. So um, kudos to them. I also attended city council meeting Tuesday night and did a presentation for domestic violence awareness and for our, um, our local um, organization. And um, while I was there, two of our high school groups were actually acknowledged. So Dr. Ewing was there with her Be Awesome Coalition. So they received the, um, the red ribbon um, proclamation. So that was pretty cool, bunch of great kids. And then uh, Mrs. Rusinello, Bernadette Rusinello was there with her DECA kids because they had to attend a council meeting um, to, as part of their civic responsibilities. So that was pretty fun. I'm glad I got to be there. Um, tomorrow I'll be at uh, the Women Empowerment um, Program that Maricopa Wells is putting on. They're gonna do it at, here at the high school at the PAC. So that's tomorrow from 8.30 to noon. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Saturday, the high school travel club is having a swap meet, and it's going to be at the stadium parking lot. So it goes from 7 to 11, so if anybody has a chance, the, all that money goes to their, because they do the international travel class. So I just want to put that out there. 
And one last thing, I went last week and visited Santa Cruz and had a nice, really nice long chat with Dr. Conley. Um, they're doing amazing um, things out there at Santa Cruz as well. So, uh, see, I think that's it. I think I got it all. Um, but it's been a great week, a couple weeks. Mr. Judd. Thank you, President Couture. Uh, I took my tour of the high school this morning. Uh, I know Mr. Abel had lots of other things to do with it, so I want to um, thank him um, during his transition for um, taking me on that tour today. Uh, I was just it's easy to say as a board member, of course, we're going to come up and give shining reviews of, uh, of the schools that we tour, but I was, and as a teacher, really impressed with what I saw. Um, every classroom, the students were um, fully engaged, uh, in many cases up and out of their seat, uh, at a whiteboard, interacting, um, the, the attention, the focus was there, um, and the, the morale was, uh, was high. All of the staff were, were very welcoming. Um, I heard no complaints, uh, and, and, mis and one thing that I didn't think about Mr. Abel moving um, to the high school is he has this built-in rapport with so many of the kids um, from, from the middle school and from other positions. Uh, it's just a natural fit, so they're walking by you know, we're at, through conducting the tour and saying hello, and he has, has stories with a lot of these kids, so uh, it was a great fit, and, and he's, I think he's just going to do a fabulous job there, so uh, I'm sure he has our full support. Um, and in terms of the grounds, the grounds look wonderful. I did see the, the shed uh, uh, protecting the, the, the riser there, um, and, but it looked great. Um, the only, uh, one of the only concerns that I think I had was uh, as far as technology, some of the, some of the computers with the um, desktop units, um, maybe some, uh, some issues with speed, uh, but uh, we can, I'm sure we'll be able to address that uh, once we get the laptop purchase in. And, uh, moving forward, we can we can take a look at that. Um, uh, there's nothing more frustrating, uh, as especially for new teachers, when you get in, you have this great, fabulous lesson plan, and it it needs a website in order to work, and you, you don't you have difficulty getting there. So uh, ho I hope that you know we address that um, the desktop systems for the for the teachers. Um, but by and large, I was just in really impressed with what I saw. Um, the students were very engaged. And Mr. Abel was doing uh, is is clearly going to jump in with both feet and do a great job. And that's all I have. Right. Dr. Miller? Uh, yes, thank you. First, I would like to uh, recognize one of our students, uh, Faith Mead. Um, she was recently uh, recognized uh, for her outstanding leadership, um, going to uh, an event um, that was discussing our economic development and growth here in Pinal County, and she was recognized as, a, as an outstanding leader. And also, uh, we have a teacher, Lynette uh, Corselli, who was recognized by the Un United States uh, Track and Field Organization as an uh, outstanding uh, organizer. So um, we definitely have uh, multiple gems uh, within our students and teachers that, you know, we definitely uh, do an outstanding job. Um, next, I would like to encourage parents that it'd be a good idea, um, if you haven't already, to um, parent view, if you're fam um, not familiar with that. Um, what you can do is, if you're not on, uh, um, have account for parent view, you can go to the uh, front office and they can give you an account. And what's really nice about parent view is if you have multiple children within the district, you can see all their grades or teachers and even email the teachers and it's uh, very accessible. So, you know, when the when our children comes home and says, I have no homework, and <laughs> you can go on Parent View and uh, bring it up. So I definitely want to encourage parents that haven't uh, signed up yet to please do. Um, this Friday, um, I'm going to uh, visit Ram Academy again. You know, we visited over the summer, and um, so Friday I'm going to go and uh, during school, during uh, when they're in school, uh, about 2.30. So if uh, there's any other... Um, board members that would like to attend uh, with me, um, please feel free to, uh, to go. Um, so I'll be there at 2.30 at the Ram Academy. This and Friday? This Friday, yes. So and then, do go they ahead. they have classes on Fridays? I thought the Fridays was optional. He's just, he's just touring the campus. He, well, I did say, I, thought, I guess I assumed that there was kid, um, students there at, uh, yeah, on Fridays. So. There should be some, but uh, it, it's for kids that are behind, so. Right. But there'll be students there. There'll be I some, expect I'm sure. Some. Yes, I yeah. see. So, uh, if there's any board members that would like to attend, if you have the time, um, definitely invited. And then also, uh, we received a uh, invite to a um, event at the uh, um, Church of Celebration. Mm -hmm. yes. And so, I plan on uh, it's for the leaders. Um, 
and uh, I plan on attending that. So I will give them my information. So I think that that would be something exciting to, to go to mm -hmm. and participate in. So with that, I yield back my time. Thank you. Thanks, President Cotre. Um, just briefly, I was able to attend the math night at the Pima Butte Elementary School last night. <laughs> and the uh, it was Halloween themed, so everyone was dressed up up in costumes, which was always fun. But the teachers did a great job putting on that night. It's uh, fun for the students, but it's also very educational. And they have different layers of math um, activities and they have different uh, programs for the younger kids versus the older kids so that everybody can participate and everybody can learn and work on their math skills. So it was a great event. I enjoyed attending that, that's all I have. Did you get to see some of the new math curriculum in, in play? Yes, absolutely. That's awesome. what they were doing. Awesome. So, mm -hmm. And what did you think? Good. It was all great. It was actually one of the best math nights they've had in um, a couple of years. So maybe with the new curriculum. Cool. I have yet to see that really, I mean, in action yet. So I'm looking forward to hearing from the schools on how that's, how that's really working out. Um, um, Monday night, I also attended the Powder Puff game. Um, I didn't have a cheerleader. I actually had a, a player. <laughs> <laughs> so... They did pretty good. Juniors did walk away with the bragging rights. But, oh yeah. You know, all in all, um, the ki all the kids were winners mm -hmm. because you know they just they were out there supporting one another yeah. and for a very very great cause. Um, Saturday, uh, last Saturday, I was asked to speak um, for uh, the Maricopa High School JSA. They had a mini con, and so they asked me to be the opening speaker. Um, There's about 20, 25 kids there. Uh, a little intimidating though when you're talking in front of high schoolers and you don't have like a script and it's <laughs> it can be intimidating. Um, they're a great group of kids, great, and they had some wonderful questions. We really do have some awesome students. We just totally do. Um, I did um, stop in at Dr. Chestnut's morning session of his um, meeting, um, and it was nice to hear the support that the people that were there were given. They understand the grades are what they are. They also understand the grades are basically based on test scores, majority of it, and that that doesn't define our school. And so it was really nice to hear. So that was kind of, I, I don't know what the evening crowd was, but I'm kind of hoping it's probably similar to what the morning crowd. Really wish we could have gotten more parents out there and, and more community members to come and hear because he did a good, he did a really good job. Uh, the, this Friday is um, the last football game, and it is mm -hmm. also senior night, so unfortunately our boys didn't make it to the playoffs, um, but it'd be really great if the community comes on out and uh, supports them for their last, night, last game and um, buys lots of 50-50 raffle tickets for the football boosters. Just a little plug there. Um, we also have, I don't know if, if anybody has replied to Lisa, but we have the legislative conference coming up in November. It's uh, November 17th. The deadline for that is November 6th. It's a Friday, it's an all day thing. Also, the annual conference for ASBA has opened up. That's going to be December 13th through the 15th. Um, the 13th is the pre-conference day and then the conference will be on the 14th and the 15th. So um, go ahead and start looking at your calendars and let Lisa know. If you are planning on going to the annual conference and you want to get a hotel room, I advise that even if you're just thinking about it, have a reserve the room. You can always let it go later, but those rooms go fast. Mm -hmm. And um, Dr. Miller, I'm also going to be at the uh, COC um, event on the 5th. They've actually asked, um, they've asked me to be um, answering questions and speaking. So it, it's, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So I'm glad you're gonna be there too. And I think that was, it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I know, because I have to go to Mass at another time. Well, that's all I have for tonight. And let's go on to, we don't have any work study sessions. So let's go to the consent agenda. Do I have any motions for the consent agenda? If there's no um, amendments, I'd like to motion to approve as is. Okay. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. I have a motion, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Great. Action item 7A, discussion and possible approval of the personnel schedule. Mr. Beckett, you know this is my favorite part of the meeting. Thank you, mine too. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, members of the board, Dr. Chestnut. 
Uh, tonight you have the personnel schedule again as presented. Uh, I'll answer your questions at this point. Any questions for Mr. Beckett? None for me. No. Believe it or not, I don't have any. I have no questions. I would uh, motion to approve the uh, um, schedule as is. I'll I have second. A motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Mr. Judd, thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Great. Thank you. Uh, next item. I hope you all brought your, your calendars with you because we are going to um, look at our calendars to schedule our uh, ropes course, our adventure course, um, great. led yeah. by our very own Mrs. Anderson. Um, but we do want, and we do have to stress that we need a minimum of how many, did you say? Like 12 would 12. be good. T so 10 to 12 10 minimum. To 12. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to need um, some additional people. And so we're looking at our administrators <laughs> to <laughs> join us. Um, so I, I know that when we kind of talked a little bit um, when we had scheduled our special meeting that we have on November 1st, which is just going to be a work study session to talk about our um, strategic plan, that we talked about maybe having this date um, for the ropes course kind of immediately following it so we can talk with the administrators kind of like, in, you know, talking about what we had just talked about at the meeting so it was all fresh in our minds. So that Saturday uh, after the, that special meeting is November 4th. Mm -hmm. um, I'm okay mm. with that if we do it in the afternoon. I cannot do it in the morning. Mm, I can't do afternoon. Well, November 4th is perfect for me, so. What about the, uh, we had two dates we were discussing, the 4th the or the 18th. The 18th. Yeah. yeah. The, the 18th, I'm open. The 18th, I'm not. Um, so. Steve, which days I are you available? Any time on the 4th. I'm out the 18th, too. What would you say, Anna Marie? I'm out on the 18th. I can't do the 18th. So the fourth, what I mean, I was thinking nine to noon, but um, I guess you guys can set. It takes three hours. Well, it would be good to have three hours um, to do some of the problem solving. Do I need to prepare before I'm cutting yeah. on three hours? <laughs> I'm starting to get worried now. I'm like, <laughs> I get tired now just watching people run. So. There's no running involved, I promise. <laughs> Lots of thinking. Well, I, you know, the fourth is fine, but I, um, as long as I'm done by, I'd have to be done by two o'clock. Ten o'clock? Mm. Can we start maybe at ten or nine? What? See, the morning's bad for Patty. What time are you done in the morning? Oh. Eleven would work for me. Would Eleven. that put you in a rut, though? Do you need to be somewhere at two, or you just need to be done? By no, two? I've got the police foundation banquet that night. That starts at five. Okay. So. So if we're done by I've got to get beautiful. Be okay. <laughs> so what'd you say? So so you but if we're done by two, then that you'd yeah. be fine with that. So yeah. if we go to eleven a.m. to two. Would that work? Uh, that's it's going to be hot. I'm just warning you. Enough. It's not going to be that hot. Okay. Steve, what, what, what is best for staff? I think that might work. Yeah. The, and the only reason I said that is because that's the last morning of all the um, uh, the youth soccer games. That's the last morning for all those kids. So that some of those administrators, I think, might be out doing that. Okay. So, all right. So, do I have a motion? So, so we're doing eleven. 11 to 2? Yep. Will that work? Okay. Make mm -hmm. sure people eat a little bit before so we're not going to stop for lunch. We're going to work straight through. So I would like to make a motion then that we um, approve November the 4th from 11 o'clock to 2 for us to participate in the uh, obstacle course. All right. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Uh, comment? Yes, please. Um, I will send out um, a, an agenda of what the d how the day is going to progress about a, a week before, actually next week, okay. um, so that everyone will kind of know what to be prepared for and where to meet. So we'll all figure that out with Steve. Perfect. Just send it to Lisa. And have yeah, and then I'll have her send it out. And then that way you can send it to whatever staff sure. um, kind of do's and don't, you know, what to wear, what stuff like that. Is that good? Yeah, so we should I think. 
Uh, no heels that day, okay. uh, no dresses, no activity clothes, you know, jeans and sneakers okay. or shorts and, you know, just make sure you're covered because you're going to be in some awkward positions. This is getting scarier by the one. minute. <laughs> Are you sure you want to do this? <laughs> okay. It'll be fun. All right, so I have a motion. Are you, uh, I, I just wanted to make okay, sure. I just perfect. let, so hopefully a few days before you'll get that agenda that'll say time, when we're starting, what to wear, where we're meeting, all the logistical stuff. Okay. If that will work. That'll be perfect. Does that work for you, Steve? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. So do I have a second? second. I will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Good. Media, did you get that on your calendar? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bet you did. Okay. <laughs> All right. Stop encouraging them. <laughs> They're waiting. They've been waiting. Okay. Uh, discussion of possible approval for the early graduation for high school students. Dr. Chestnut? Chris Latham, high school counselor, is here to talk about our early graduates. I'll turn it over to Chris. Yeah, we have um, one early graduate, um, Andrew Orson. Um, he is a senior, obviously. He is wanting to uh, graduate in December. He would still like to take part in the uh, graduation ceremony, but one of the reasons why he would like to graduate early is because he is going to be in um, servicing in the Army, so he is going to go into the service. One of the things that he would like to do is, you know, work and get some extra money, you know, of course, work out a little bit, you know, get himself ready for that basic training and things of that nature. But um, he really is an, um, an awesome student. Um, he's done well for himself, obviously, if he's, you know, put himself in a situation to graduate early. Um, so he has done a fantastic job. I'm here to support him 100% uh, in uh, anything that he does, especially graduating early, because we always want all of our uh, students here at Maricopa to graduate. But when they can graduate early and get the requirements done, um, I think that's even all the better. So um, if there are any questions, um, you know, that, that is my statement. Any questions for Mr. Latham? I don't no. know if it would be that my, the question would be best for you, but my question is, I, and I'm reading through material, one of the requests would be about prom, mm -hmm. that he wanted to go to prom, I believe. Is um, that mm -hmm. is it our policy? I mean, he would still be able to go to prom mm -hmm. if we can, that won't be an issue. Yeah, we have a guest pass policy, yeah. and, and you know, technically, I suppose he'd be a guest, but uh, that'd be easy to do. Yeah. Okay. Good. I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't no, you know, any barriers or challenges or anything we'd have to approve before that for to let him go. That's good. Well, and he still wants to walk in May, yeah. correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, in the motion, would we need to motion that, or would that just be? Just no, you would no, just it's just early graduate. Okay. No, they, that's all in there. Any more questions? Nope. Discussion? How about a motion? I would motion to approve um, the early graduation um, as written in, um, in front of us. All right. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Health All right. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Tell right. him to run early and often. <laughs> <laughs> and lots All of right. Item D. Discuss, consider, and give direction on voting on several bylaw changes from the ASBA. And so there are several propo proposals, and we have to give direction for each one of these to Lisa because it's going to be electronic voting. Yeah. So we have to motion, so we have to kind of go through this yeah. one by one. So proposal A. And this was, this was submitted by the Governance Committee. Uh, question, do we, need, we don't need to read the whole thing. I mean, w can we just go through That's and fine. suggest who, how we want to vote? Because I've already read through them. Can does we just say? Does anybody have any questions on any of the proposals? Yeah. Mm. Is that Sounds good? good to that, me. Okay. Yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt no, you, no, President Katrina. I'm just like, I, I don't want to read every single one of them. I just want to make sure that <laughs> if, if anybody's got any questions so, that we so address them yeah. before we go so through. So we're going to vote on each, each yes. Uh, proposal? Yes. So is that just yay, nay, or I? Well, we have to direct Lisa how. We as a board, let's say Proposition A, do we want her to vote yes or vote no on that? And then she will electronically do that. So we have to decide as a board, 
which of these proposals do we support or if you have questions. So at the end, our motion will be, you'll have to spell it out in the motion. Yeah. That we're giving Lisa direction for the board to vote on each on how on each proposal. And okay. each one that's approved will have to be. Well, delineated can we just do it all together? Approved? It's just yeah. proposal. Yeah, no, you can no. You, you'll have we'll have one separate motion, but in that motion, you'll ha it'll have to be determined on how we vote. Well, Lisa will be writing it down. She didn't look at her. She's mm. <laughs> She said, "I can handle this board." Okay. All right. So proposal A. Um, I say yes to proposal A. I'll um, second that. I have a question though. Okay. Is there um, a clause like if you're in the hospital? No. Yes. Well, not in, in this, this, but one. in the bylaws there is. But this is adding to the, the current bylaws. Um, okay, because that's what I'm worried about. I mean, when you are missing because of a health issue that you have no control over, you're getting kicked off a board for that. I'm not sure if that's, that's, that's my concern. So, um, but if you say that it's covered, well, if you look at the, did you read the proposal in, that's inserted? Oh, the full. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, they basically, t they, they basically, had, they, if you miss one in a calendar year, now, that, then you're out. Then you're out. And see, that was some of my concerns with that too. What if, you know, what does that include? Or is it's Mrs. It's Mrs. More than one. Right. Oh, no. It's more than one? Yes, yeah. not one. It's so, stated so as like more than one. So you can miss one, but then right. in a calendar a year. In a calendar and we're talking year. About four, mm, that's calendar. reasonable. Yeah. That, that's reasonable. So what if, yeah, yeah, gonna, what what if you have a baby? Or if they're or ever every four months, they're four times a year. Right, quarterly. So, so if you miss more than one, so they're you saying on your second one, Correct. you're out. Right. Yeah. But there's only four meetings. And there's only actually, you know. That's my point. Yeah. There's only four meetings. Yeah. No, you get to miss one. If after you miss having served, one, that's half the yeah. meetings. I mean, after <laughs> having served on the board, you know well in advance when those meetings right. are. Um, so it makes it very hard to get anything done when you have board members that don't show up. I mean, just quick math you miss two, that's half the meetings, and that's right. not acceptable. So. Right. Because it says any officer or director who misses more than one meeting. So that allows for sick, illness, wh whatever. Um, and, and I would say yes to that. Okay. Yes. Because, because then the, the, um, the logic behind that would be that if there was a health reason or something like that, then maybe it wouldn't be, be anyway. might be the, not be the best interest to right. serve. Yeah. Or at least I, think about that, yeah. I mean, it could be. It could be any for any reason, but it's just hard to conduct business when mm -hmm. people, because there's other people that, that can want hold up that seat. Right, sure, things sure. need to be. So, right. um, anyway, that's my that's my opinion. Dr. Miller, how are you? Um, yay. Okay. Yay. Unanimous. Okay. Perfect. Proposal A is a yes. Proposal B. And this one was submitted by the governance committee. Yeah, this a is couple the governance times. committee again. Didn't we already approve this once? No, well, no, see, we did. Ours is much more clearer. Our, yeah. Ours is proposal C. Yeah. And so, um, Mrs. Anderson, how do you feel on this one? Um, I say no on B, and here's the reason why. It's very convoluted when they start trying to go. Um, and I did, they did, uh, ASBA did call me because they wanted to try to combine um, B and C. And after reading what the governance committee proposed, it's very confusing. And so ours is a straight majority of, or two thirds of those voting. Yep. So uh, ours is clearer. So I say no to this one because it's too complicated. Um, Cause ha you know, it says when a quorum of 60% of the member boards vote and three fourths of all votes are in affirm in affirmative. It's like. We clearly can't pass both because that right. would create. Right. right, it's one or the other. Yeah. Be a discrepancy. So I, I say no to B and yes to C. Okay. Mr. Just Judd. I'm going to mimic Mrs. Anderson votes. Uh, yay, I'm sorry, no to B and yay to C. I, I agree also for proposal B, no. Proposal C, yes. Mm -hmm. 
Same thing. Proposal B, no. Proposal C, yes. Okay, it's unanimous again. No on proposal B. Yes on proposal C. Let's see, I gotta take that off. All right. Proposal D. And this has to do with the um, caucus. Mm -hmm. And I know that Mrs. Anderson can really shed some light if anybody is really. Any well, this and, and um, yeah. the following one, E2, I think. D is only, currently the caucus is, is Hispanic, Native American, um, Indian caucus. And as you know, um, as we've been cleaning up our own policies, uh, Indian is no longer um, a term that is used. It's just Native American. So all they're doing in D is taking out Indian and leaving it um, Hispanic Native American caucus, which I, I think sounds, I, I say yes. I agree. It, it only took us 600 years. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, just, yes. just so yeah. you know, um, it wasn't until we actually, uh, our board, questioned that policy right. that we were looking at, and we questioned having um, Indian in there because it, it's just um, not, not politically correct, it's just not used. Um, and it wasn't until we questioned ASBA that they f that they went back, <laughs> and now ha are going through and cleaning up their um, policies. Oh, yeah. So I, I w kudos to this board for um, setting the bar high. Okay. So proposal D is a yes. Proposal yes. E. Now this is the one. Isn't this the one where they wanted to add a director yes. to it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So proposal E, I say no, um, and the reason I say that is because. Um, every county uh, only has one vote, vote, like Pinal County only has one vote. Um, Maricopa County has two because of their population, and Pima has two because of their population. Otherwise, all the other counties have one vote. So when you have caucuses, you have the black caucus, and then you have the Native, his, the Hispanic Native American caucus they should be one vote, like all the other counties. So what they want to do is they want to change their vote to two votes so that their president gets to vote and their past president gets to vote. Um, and I think they should only have one vote like everybody else. And one of the reasons they do that is because one year there'll be a, a Hispanic president and then right. the next year it'll be a Native American right. president and they want both of them to be able to vote all the time. So they kind of flip flop. But as a caucus, as a whole, they should be voting one vote. They should be communicating. Yeah. So, yeah, and I, um, so I, I, I oh, that totally could put them in conflict. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. You mean to have two votes? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I would prefer to keep it the way it is, um, that they have one vote. Now, if they wanted to separate and make a two caucuses, two caucuses a Hispanic caucus right. and a Native American caucus, then I would say do that. But to have one um, area of interest have that much voting power, um, I say no. That's just my. Well, and also I think that there need, maybe needs to be some incentive in order for both the groups within the one caucus to um, communicate <coughs> right. better together. Yeah. I mean, I, I would like to see them form th their own caucuses personally. Right. Uh, um, then they can each have a vote. They each. can each have right. a vote, but they could also each take care of, you know, what they need to take care of, so. Um, but the process would be clearer that way, though, if they were split, which correct. is a lot different from this. This is more of, you know, politics at its finest. Yeah. Well, but we need to vote on this one. So yeah. I, I say no on, on giving them two votes. Uh, I say no on that as well. Mr. Miller. No. No. Again, unanimous, no on proposal E. Proposal F. Yes. This is a brand new one. Yes. And I think it came about because I cut somebody off during the delegate assembly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No action by so any delegate or presiding authority <laughs> shall end <laughs> debate or discussion. That sounds like it was. <laughs> you know, you can only debate for so long. And then I had Mr. Judd do it, so I wouldn't get in trouble the second time around. Thank you so much for that, by the way. All right. So, Mrs. Anderson, so how do you feel bus. about this one? I say no on F because we go by, we use Robert's rules of order. 
um, when we do the delegate assembly. And it, while hearty discussion is great, um, I think that in the past, literally there have been discussions that have gone on just one proposal for an hour because two groups will be arguing. So I for think there, word. yeah. <laughs> so I do think there needs to be um, a procedure in place where you can basically agree to disagree and take a vote. But doesn't that exist with call to the question within the members? They're trying to get rid of they're call. They're, they're trying to get rid of call to the question. But this states, that's not how I'm reading that. This states that it's uh, presiding authority. Any, oh, any delegate, okay. Yeah. Any so are they, they attempting to get rid of that? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. That, this is their way of getting away from call the question. Right. But with the Roberts Rule of Order, I mean, there's already a procedure in Correct. order for this. And, and they're just wanting to change that order well, to. But you have to follow the bylaws. So if this was in a bylaw, we, that would supersede Roberts. Right, the Roberts Rule. If but they were to want this to pass, that would need to be much more specific as well, because yeah. this isn't. It, there's no point of order yeah. that this references. Right. Well, I, the school that proposed it, I, I'm pretty sure it's somebody that I cut off because I can picture him in my head. <laughs> well, if they need, if they want to change that, I would suggest it be much more specific because yeah. there's no. This isn't directing us towards any one specific rule of order in order to be able to change or amend. Yeah. So I'm taking the, that's a no? Yes. Correct. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Unanimous again. Proposal F is a no. Proposal G. Boy, you really it's creepy crunching. people. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this one has nothing to do with you, Mrs. Anderson? <sighs> no, I think it does. <laughs> I think it does. Good. I mean, you know, when I make waves, I make big waves. Mm -hmm. I'm just asking because it's from the same school. So. It's the same it school. It, it's, I'm, I'm just saying. But they're only really adding. No, they want to create a new caucus. They want to create a conservative, a conservative caucus. caucus. Would that be the same as like a Native American caucus? Yes, it would be like a separate. So you have ASBA, and then you have your specific caucuses, which represent... <coughs> Um, the interests of different groups. So, you know, like your black caucus and your H Hispanic. Right, American but they're caucus. all referencing demographics. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, to go off, and the thing is, is within those caucuses and even within the ASBA board, political conservatism shouldn't, whether it's liberal, wh whatever it is, should not be a part of deciding go ahead and vote what no happens with our <laughs> education. So, um, and this is the same person that doesn't want us to stop the discussion. So that's all. I'm yeah, this one I was I was pretty con uh, and I'm still confused on on this. So what I'm what I'm understanding is that because earlier you said when it like for the Native American, the Hispanic and Native American uh, caucus that they should have their own caucus if they were to have their own vote. Mm -hmm. But what you're saying, you're differentiating the fact that it's the demographics. For you know, Hispanic, Native American, it's you know, cultural. Me, cultural. It's cultural. And, uh, versus political. political. Now, is there any? Are, now, I'm not familiar. Are there any other? That's a good question. No. That um, okay. are. So there's mm -hmm. no. The only caucuses ASBA has is the, the Black Caucus and the Hispanic Native American Caucus, and so, um, they have a vote on the board, but, you've already got your. You've already got your county directors, and believe me, there is a huge political rainbow. Um, and and I think that I think that each county does a good job of electing somebody to represent their county. That whether they're, yeah, I mean, a conservative caucus to serve to do what? I, I mean, I to just to accept this in opens a political can of worms yes. within the ASBA, which is very yes. dangerous. It it makes our our education system because we're here for the children. We're here for you know, are educating board members, and then and then in turn promoting public education. So I, I don't see how creating a conservative caucus would benefit um, anything except maybe I, I, I just. Well, what my concern is that this is just going to start right snowball effect of every person who has a different right belief or 
um, conviction or special interest to want to start their own caucus, and then ASBA is not an organization <laughs> anymore. Right. It's a bunch of caucuses fighting each other. Right. So within the bylaws, does it state like what parameters uh, would be eligible for a caucus or what uh, would be excluded from being? Uh, a it, any, anybody is, can yeah, anybody can propose yeah but it has to be approved it has yeah. but it has yeah, to right. be approved during this during this time I'm a no on this one I'm a no also I'm gonna be a yes okay. Mr. Judd. I've already stated it but I'll state it again I'm a no on that Have to be a bylaw. I, I don't know. Why can't they just make this part of the, the law conference um, work, uh, breakout session? Right, part of the agenda. Well, and they do. Um, well, we have the legislative meeting on November 17th, and we talk about it there. We send information out, it's posted on the ASBA's website. So I, I don't know. While, while I think there does need to be an education piece to that. Um, I don't think it needs to be in the bylaws. I just think that, and the part of that issue is they don't have a consistent um, committee chair. So every year the chair changes. Right. Um, hopefully that will, you know, change next year that it, it will be consistent. But when you constantly have inconsistency, it's, it's, it's hard to um, keep the education piece up. But, where I think that this is important, and I think that it definitely needs to be a piece of um, the legislative process, I don't think it needs to be a bylaw. I don't think so either. I'm a, I'm a no on this as well. Because the information is out there. I mean, it's I, whether you choose to read it on the website or not is, is not. I still think it needs to be I a bylaw. I think maybe they need to have a breakout session if they want to offer it. Or I think, it's, to, yeah. to I think it would be beneficial. Yeah. I think that would be beneficial because there were a lot of questions yeah. when call to, call to the question came up and those kind of, yeah. you know, uh, that gamesmanship while this, this debate is going on and a lot of people were unaware of um, yeah. and didn't know how to interact in that way. So it may not be, it may not be a bad idea, but I well, understand the point about like it not I say, being. I, I don't think it needs to be a bylaw, but I do right. think that uh -huh. it needs to be a session at the legislative conference, which is coming in November. So I, I do think there needs to be a, a But if point. we leave it, if we leave it open, how many people are going to attend that session? That's not our problem. I mean, I if even somebody if wants to go, it's not going to tell you that you right. have to do it either. I mean, even, even if this no. is a bylaw, who, who says you're going to listen to it? But you're who, saying they have to hold it. Yeah. It just means it's more red tape to get in. I mean, it's already a big, long process to even get the delegate assembly to happen. I mean, we, most of our boards don't even participate. So I, I think to add one more layer of, of, <laughs> of stuff, um, I, I think that you can't force somebody, um, but you can certainly offer it during conferences. The thing of it is, I think it, even if it was passed and voted for, it, even if it was enforced, I don't know how many people would end up showing exactly. up for that anyways. Exactly. So it would probably be now at the end of the day, not, not right. something that's functional. So if this was passed, I mean, just overall, if it was passed, mm -hmm. just say, say it was, would there be a financial cost to ASBA? Because now they have to sure, you know, they're going to have to set aside a do location. Do the delegate assembly workshops? Yeah. And what would that look like? So, I mean, for me, that, that's where my caution is. Well, it's not going to cost it. Well, they could, they could charge yeah. us if we attend it. If, if they were going to make it a one day or a two day conference, they would have, you know, workshop. Yes, they would have to charge board members. Um, so, because you got to rent a facility that's big enough. Right. Unless they were to hold it in Phoenix. Well, it would be probably in, in Phoenix. I mean, there's just so many layers of, of what happens next. I mean, right. I think that this can be. I don't even think you need a committee. I just think you just at the legislative committee. Right, at that level, I think so. You send stuff so. out, and actually, there was a letter that was sent out <laughs> because I wrote it, and people got it about a week before the delegate assembly, and it explained the procedures and how it was going to go. Now, did they read it? 
I don't know. At going to this and being doing it for right. the first time, I could understand why Absolutely. someone would submit this, but it was wise of you to invite me to Phoenix prior to, so I understood yeah. what was going into the process the next being time. built in, and I think I had a better understanding because of that, so at the very least, like mentioning, maybe you should go down to Phoenix and sit down right. in the session so that you can understand the process and what, uh, what, our what the individuals representing ASBA want from the members. So uh, yeah, I would, I would probably vote no against yeah. it. Well, and I, and I will tell you that a few years ago, it's hard to remember, I've been a member delegate for a number of years, mm -hmm. they actually had, right before the delegate mm -hmm. assembly, they actually had a, like a mini session breakfast where we went down, it was part of the law, con they, you know, it was piggybacked on the law conference, and so they went through and they went through everything, and they even actually talked about hot topics too, so that we would understand kind of what what may come up based on what the legislative committee had spoken about and had debated prior to getting to this point. Um, but again, I, I I say no on this. I don't think we need it as bylaw. In well, go ahead. I just want to say I see this as possibly like a unfunded mandate. Mm -hmm. Yes. If this was to be enacted. Yeah. So I'm. Don't, well, from that perspective, I, I vote no. The, the his, let me give you history on this. So what we're, for those that are listening out in TV land, we're discussing where they're trying to propose that the legislative committee shall hold a basic delegate assembly workshop in advance to the delegate assembly in order to orient new and existing members of establishing the political agenda. Um, moving items to the floor for action and explaining the process. Now, when we, the reason years ago, the delegate assembly was its own separate. It was not combined with the law conference. And so it was two days where you had one day, they went through and talked about how you're gonna do it, rules of order, that sort of thing, the procedure side of it. And then the second day was the delegate assembly, remember? Yeah. The reason it was changed was because um, ASBA was trying to serve the needs of their um, board members and making sure, and, and I was a, uh, on the ASBA board at the time, and there was so much money being spent um, for very little outcome. And so we decided to combine it because board members can't get away all, all the time. They, you know, you can't have a, a workshop every month. They just can't do it. School districts can't afford it. So we combined the delegate assembly with the law conference because we figured board members were already going to be at this conference, and so they just we just piggybacked the delegate assembly. Now, did some of the procedures? That is the case, and yes. What I'm curious is how that can't just be solved by having a, mini session. a session. Yeah, for right. those new members that need right. that. Yes, and and I has think has that th been brought up? It has, and I will tell you, there were there have been sessions at conferences, mm -hmm. and yeah, nobody attends them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, while I think it's, I think that we have to continue to do this. I think that we have to continue that education piece. I don't think it needs to be um, mandated. Right. I, I agree with Gary. But, it's an unfunded mandate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So no. It's unanimous. Unknown. Oh, All right. So we've gotten through all of them? Yep. Lisa, you have all of our notes? Good, now I need someone to make a motion. <laughs> motion to approve um, the bylaw change proposals for the Arizona School Board Association. Do you want me to go through each one or do you already have it written down? as discussed. So as discussed, um, the board has made a decision and for Lisa to pass it on. Does that make sense? That's my motion. Second. All right, I got a motion in a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Great, thank you guys. All right, discussion of possible approval of the ELA Adoption Committee to consider the purchase of our new curriculum. Dr. Chestnut? Well, it's very exciting to be able to talk about this tonight, and uh, <coughs> Stephanie Reinhardt is here, our new professional development director and part of our curriculum department. Uh, other members of the department are at a conference uh, today and getting back tomorrow, so she has some information to share with us.
on the, is it on board docs? Yeah, it yeah it's on board docs. Can you, can you show it off of board docs, Garrett? It's, a t it's, it's attached to board docs. Do you have that? Mr. Beckett, can you get him on board docs so we can see those slides? It, it helps the TV land group to understand better. So power, like a PowerPoint. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. It's just a different icon than I'm used to seeing. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. You want to use mine, Garrett? Oh, just plug it in there. No, I put it back in my office. You want to use this, want to use this laptop? Uh, He ran, ran into a kindergarten or kid that he had in kindergarten. It's kindergarten. Yeah. 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 So the kid doesn't look very like he remembers me. Yeah. It's a, yeah. And he, oh boy, he does too. He remembers. It's just. Thank you, sir. on the fourth. Is it from? Oh, cool. Oh, that's mine. Oh, wait, that's yours. I know. <laughs> I know. Kind of find it funny. <laughs> That's so awkward. <laughs> 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 well, they say we have issues with either China and war. Yeah. 
No, we don't. <laughs> Yeah. Flip it. <laughs> Not that for my first presentation. Though. Yeah. <laughs> it was a test to see if you could work under pressure. <laughs> well, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> okay. Just a minute. You need to help Steve pick up that mic, too. There you go. Thank yeah. you. Good evening. I'm Stephanie Reinhardt from the curriculum department. Next slide. <laughs> So the curriculum department continues to be excited by the prospect of adopting new curriculum. In August, Ms. Roden and Mr. Watson shared with you many reasons to adopt that new ELA curriculum, including feedback that was given from teachers, <coughs> concerns regarding alignment to Arizona state standards, and AZ merit. Next slide, thank you. As well as the age of our current ELA curriculum. Those slides are all in review. We reached out to three different companies for uh, price quotes, and some of the factors that were considered when looking at the cost of ELA curriculum include that the multiple tiers and supplemental materials, as well as the growth of MUSD since our last um, curriculum adoption in 2004. So the price quotes range from about $1.2 million to $1.7 million. The quotes show that there is some variance due to the packages that the companies presented. Uh, some of the price differences stem from how many books um, were in each package. Um, are those books hardback or softback? How much technology might be included? Those kinds of factors um, explain the differences in the quotes. So with the board's approval, we'll continue to move forward and answer any questions that we can. Maybe just one minor clarification too, um, as Mr. Roush has been crunching numbers, uh, looking at budget projections, he's, he's uh, recommending that we break this purchase into two parts. That the first part be approximately $1 million. And uh, as you can see, there's a range of price options. We don't know exactly how much we're going to spend, but we think that we could, we could do that over a two-year period. Uh, if we did that, the first order would be placed in July of 2018. So that would be in the next fiscal year. That would be where the $1 million would be spent, and then the remaining, uh, up to $1 million would be spent, and the re remainder of the purchase would be made one year later. That's the recommendation from uh, Mr. Roush. I think it makes good financial sense, and uh, that's the direction the committee would go uh, as far as their recommendations, um, assuming board uh, agrees with that direction. Okay, I've got a couple of questions. Yeah, me too. So when we first talked about doing this, and we did this with ELA, or um, with MAP, yeah we took it all out of the reserves. And when we talked about doing ELA, we also talked about it coming out of the reserves. If we have the money in the reserves, what difference does it make if we do it in one fail swoop versus two? That was my question as well. Simple girl, just you know, simple math. I just kind of want to know. Well, this, this agenda item is only to approve you forming a committee. Right. Right, but, but if we, but but the committee has to know what direction. If we're going to split it and go into two years, that committee needs to know that going forward, choosing a curriculum that can be that would determine the grade level, how the grade levels get the yes, curriculum. Exactly. I would imagine. So yeah, if, if that's how we're going to do it, so I think we really need to decide too, as a board, are we okay with the recommendation to split it and do it into two different years, or do we want to? or can we fis uh, fiscally pull the trigger and do it all in one year? My question too is if we purchase this in July of 2018 and July of 2019, if we split it up, when would it actually be adopted into yeah. the school year? Well, this math purchase was uh, ordered on July 2nd, 2017, so it was here. I mean, it was uh, you know a challenge to get it out to people in time for the start of the school year, and there were a few orders that were misplaced, yes, but uh, it was on site. But I'm school talking. started in August. Coming next year, it starts in July. True. I, I can't deny that. Can we order it by May? That's where our fiscal year issue gets more difficult. I know Mr. Rausch's uh, concern is that uh, 
you know, we are going to be spending three and a half to $4 million in reserve funds over the next couple of years. And so being fiscally conservative, he'd like to make sure we have uh, the reserves to cover any unforeseen expenses. I'd be glad to let him speak for himself, but I know that's a, kind of a summary of what he's described to me. Well, and I'm all for being fiscally conservative, but as I've said many times during our budget discussions, um, the kindergartens in kindergarten only have this year, and the first graders, and they only have first grade next year. And looking at our test scores, we need help in ELA. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I, I would rather take a little risk and invest in our children so that they get the ELA curriculum they need as we go forward um, than sit back and let it continue on um, as is. That, that's just my opinion. So you, you want to enchilada not split yeah I mean I would like to see it happen before I would like to see it purchased even before 2018 yeah. fiscal year so that it can get implemented That's so that like when before, school yeah. starts but I mean I want to see I understand I'm not the finance director of the school <laughs> and I would like to see um, Mr. Roush's concerns maybe laid out in terms of our budget and what the impacts would be um, if he feels that strongly I'm about it. But I want to see the numbers and see what it looks like and the projections. I, I don't want to blindly go one way or the other. I, I want to see it done all at one time. I'm going to be honest. I, 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 because in the past, over the last however long it is, even as a teacher, you know, you purchase part of something, and you say, oh, next year we're going to purchase the other part, and sometimes next year never happens. So based on that, I say we invest in our kids and we do all of it at one time, K-12. I, I, I don't think we can wait. We've waited too long for curriculum. And, um, I don't I, want to our, wait until July either because no, I want, I, we I need want to push it up. to be fully prepared when the school year yes. rolls out that they're, they, they feel confident yes. with the new curriculum and teaching it. My question is, oops, sorry, since this is just to approve the committee, and I understand the committee needs direction, mm -hmm. but can we approve the committee and then have another agenda item about the funding of the LA curriculum and make a motion at that point? Because um, we have two, we have another meeting in what, two weeks? The eighth? Yeah, the eighth. Yeah, we could have a discussion then. Um, where we can see, you know, a spreadsheet or a, a you know, budget. Um, numbers and, and Mr. Roush can um, outline, you know, what the impacts would be so that we can just see it. Like I said, I'm already leaning towards doing it anyways, but I, I would like, if he is cautioning us against that, I would just like to see what those impacts are. And I don't think it stops this committee from starting. I just want to make sure, would that, would that work? Could the committee go ahead and start with us possibly, you know, deciding on how and when we purchase the material in November? They, they can start that, what they need to start? Yes, I don't see any problem with that. And I think it might, uh, we might want to wait a few months before we have that financial discussion. I think the point is a good one. I mean, the idea is a good one to have a discussion about what a finance look, mm -hmm. look like. I think the committee could work on options. And I, yeah, I think it needs to be an ongoing discussion on what we can afford and when we can afford it. And I think we should do that. Right. Well, and the committee could even have like a plan A and a plan B, like exactly. full implementation, partial implementation. Yes. I do think that's, um, as we go forward. Um, so I have another question about a different part component of this, so I don't want to cut off discussion about this if there's any other. No, we're just, well, you, you, can, are you are You can continue. I mean, I have something I'd like to say as well, but you might as well get it all out at one time while, Thanks, while it's Gary. fresh on the mind. Thanks, Gary. All right, Dr. Miller. Um, so in terms of the actual committee and how it's going to be formed and how it's going to be operated, I think a couple things, one, we have a lot more time this year than we had last year because we had this discussion, I think, in the, in the it was after spring. the first of the year. And I know that it was with our policies of how you have to have it out and displayed, it was a, a shorter time frame to work within to get the teachers in, um, involved in the committee and to make these decisions. Um, and so I understand that, but to improve upon that this year, um, I would like to see district um, staff open up the committee to whoever wants to participate as you have, but also to really seek out, recruit, beg and plead your top performing teachers yeah, I was, to come participate. Comment. Because 
We know we have some amazing top performing teachers in this district who exceed every year for some ELA. of them, yeah. all of their students. Yeah. Yeah. They need to be involved in this process. They, they absolutely need to be. They are our shining stars. Um, they're excelling in the classroom. They're, you know, they're proving themselves. And I just, I, you know, I implore you to bring them in. And I know, you know, if they don't volunteer, but even ask if they them. don't volunteer, go ask them, beg them, um, whatever you can do to get them involved in this process. <laughs> We have a good plan for that. We got some good feedback after the ELA pilot um, where teachers were wanting to teach all three curriculums so that they could really compare them, mm -hmm. which really isn't feasible, you right. know. Um, so we have talked to each of the companies um, to see whether they would be willing to set us, send us sets for each building so that we can get full um, sets, K through five, six through eight, nine through 12, of each of the companies that we're considering in each of the buildings so they don't have to come here. So they have the materials in their building. They can grab, you know, a lesson here and there from each one. They'll be able to peruse it at their leisure. We'll have some kind of a rubric, you know, so that we can get more involvement from all the staff. I'd That's like wonderful. to ask you a question on that point that you mm -hmm. just brought up, that the teachers requested to have all three and teach all three. They now wanted, th yes. Now they, we're talking about these are samples, and we're not, or is this going to be the full curriculum? The, um, I'm not sure exactly okay. if they're sending us everything, but I know we have access to the online portals um, for each of the companies, um, and the the textbooks. We won't have full sets with full classroom um, textbooks and everything for them. So we'll have sample sets, but they'll still be able to get in and teach sample lessons. Um, you know, same cause and effect lesson from all three companies, see what they like, you know, without taking up a whole lot of pilot time. Was that the consensus from the teachers that they wanted all three? They wanted all three. Yeah, they I, wanted to have access to all of them. All and it's just not feasible to be able to, to teach all three in a pilot. So, so you're going to have, one school's going to have company A, another that, school's going to no, have no, company I, B. No. no. Each school's going to have all a three. A sample of all three. Yes. So every grade level. Okay, so that makes that makes sense you, to me now. When you say it's not feasible, this is something that's already been looked into because the teachers requested to have all three. We've looked at it and it's not feasible. We've asked the companies. I think from a time perspective to be able to pilot the way we piloted last time and to teach all three, you're going to lose some of your curriculum time in um, and if you're not teaching the same content from all three vendors, then it's hard to compare them. Um, comparing apples to apples. What, what happened last year was a teacher at each school site piloted the math curriculum mm -hmm. each, um, this is what, Sample. each uh, kind, A, B, and C, and then from that pilot that they uh, took on, informed their other teachers at their site about which one they thought was best and which one they liked and the pros and cons of them. What, what Ms. Reinhardt is saying is this year, or for the ELA adoption, she's hoping that instead of that model, where someone's trying to pilot three different curriculums at one time, that they'll have all of the curriculums available at each site so that every teacher can go in there and take a sample and try it out and not, not do a pilot where you're doing Right, just and then we, ha we had yeah. one teacher teaching one program, we had another teaching another program, and then we had another teaching another program and each one of them loved their program right. because that's the one they taught. So they didn't have time to teach all of them. They could go observe the other teachers and see it. But this way they have access to all of the curriculum. Yeah. So mm -hmm. a kindergarten teacher at any building will be able to, to go into their teacher guess, lounge where it's you know, on display and be able to pull and teach from every single one of them. I guess my point of confusion is that if this has already been done before, um, with the math curriculum and it was done in a way that the teachers sound like they're, they're asking for that again to have all No, they're asking no. for something different. They're asking okay. because like the kindergarten teacher, you know, she taught one of the programs and uh, could observe the other ones but didn't teach any of the other ones. So they want access to be able to teach all of the different programs at different points. Mm -hmm. But so the it, pilot also ran for two months, I think. So if it was the consensus of all the teachers that that's what they would like to do, what's preventing us from doing that? That's what we're trying to do, is get access to all of the programs in every building so that they can teach all of the programs. Okay. I, I guess I was thrown off because when you had said it, it sounded like you said that it wasn't feasible to do, 
to have all three. For a two-month pilot, um, the way that we did it before, where they teach program A for two months, and then program B for two months, and then program C, so they can really see all the different components, I, that's not very feasible. Who is making the decision that that's not very feasible? Because it doesn't sound like it came from the teachers. They're still going to have all three choices, right? But but the pilot is not going to be six months long. I get this, but what I'm asking is, teachers requested all three, and it's sounding like that that's not what's going to happen. That it's not feasible to do that. No, they're going to get no, all three. No, there's going to be a get set all three. of all okay. three in the teachers' And they'll have lounge. them for a length of time, and they'll have access to all of them. Not all at once. They'll have all three all. in the building all at the same time. Okay. So they're going to be apologize. set up. I apologize. Maybe okay. my confusion yeah. was the way that was worded. It yeah. sounded like they were requesting something and it wasn't feasible to do it that way, but it sounds like we were. Sorry, I'm sure that. it's okay. me. No, that's yeah. okay. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that we were listening to what the teachers were right. requesting. Well, Absolutely. she originally said that it wasn't feasible to do all three for every single teacher, but each building would have all three now. So that okay. building, you know, Desert Wind Middle School will have all three companies to yes. choose from. Does that make sense? Yes. Better? I, I've had a lot of I conversations. I just wanted, to, when it was said, like I said, yeah. I just want to make sure that these are the individuals going to yeah. be working with this material. I want to make sure that they're being listened to and that we're doing everything that we can do in order to make sure that they have the materials. We agree. Here's another question. Is yes. it possible for this committee to narrow it down to two so that now teachers, I mean, can't the committee look and say, you know what, these two are the best? Why does there have to be three? I'm just, I'm curious. I don't know why there has to be three, oh. but I don't know how we would narrow it down now that we do have three. Is it a part of the bidding process that we have to look at three? No. But maybe that could be the committee's initial. I'm just throwing it out there so that, I, I mean, you know, you've got, then you, they can decide, you know, here's two, here's two, let's look at them, which one do we like best? Rather well, and three is voting on three sometimes oh. your vote ends up weird and it's going to water it down. Right. So how do you yeah. even know that? That's a good point. I, that should, I'm just I'm curious. Something to think about. Yeah. I'd be oh. glad to take that back as, as feedback to Kristen Wade. I think they might have a better rationale for that. I, I, I'm sorry I can't speak to it better, but I think it's something to consider. And I think you're right. It makes the voting easier. It makes yeah. it clear which the what the majority is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, how was so, the list of three compiled? How did we? How did we come upon these three? Was this was this just something that was recommended by Krista in in this? In the I, I, I don't know. I think it was a matter of review, and those three rose to the top. They're the three biggest companies, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So right now, what we need to do. Well, before um, we vote, I still would like to speak. Okay, go ahead. Um, now, as board members, I um, I recognize in myself that we all have our own strengths and, and limitations. And I recognize in myself that when it comes to curriculum, this is one of my areas I have more um, room for growth and, and development as a board member. So basically what I'm saying is that um, I don't know, I have a lot to learn in this area. <laughs> so um, my question now, just look at this, and I don't see you know, there'd be any challenge or barrier of forming a committee. I mean, that's the purpose of this agenda item. But you know, as we're you know, um, processing through this, the question that I have, or at least the first thing that kind of sticks out, was the 2004 was the last time that we up updated the ELA. Um, so my question is, or at least what I'm, you know, wondering or thinking that comes to mind is, I mean, there's only so many ways we can teach, you know, the the, the moon landing. There's only so many ways we can teach, you know, complete sentences. So what's the difference between what we have now and what um, what what the uh, these new curriculums, you know, that has a pretty big price tag. What's the difference? Because I mean, I'll jump in on that. Um, being is it it is what I do. Uh, the, <laughs> please, the, please the, speak to the, us. The, there is uh, a dramatic difference between the technological component. Number one, um, when you're talking ten years ago, you're talking about an entirely different technological landscape. Uh, I mean, these these were not common uh, 10 years ago. Th there are a lot of advances. Students have dramatically more access from home in different, in different uh, capacities. Uh, you, have, you have technical book, you have uh, digital books now where you can see something, an image, and spin it and be able to get a full, a full view of what you're looking at. Uh, the, the, the difference between that and a 2D is, is dramatic. Uh, 
Um, now, can you teach the moon landing in a certain way and have the kids memorize the dates? Absolutely, but I think, um, generally speaking, kids get it a little bit more when there's so much more visual, um, visual aids and additions to the curriculum to make it sink in. That's a difference between curriculum development over the years. There are lots of different ways that you are, that you are presenting that material to a student, um, and it, it helps them uh, recall that information better. The other, the other thing, too, Dr. Miller, is that since 2004, um, the standards have changed mm -hmm. drastically, and our tests have changed drastically. And the materials that we currently have don't fully support the new AB the merit new. tests and the new, cur in the new rigorous standards. Yeah. Perfect, and that's what I was wanting yeah. to get at, because that's, that's my understanding. So then my next question, being that that was uh, expressed, then how going through this is, um, how is, is there a process to look at those standards and to differentiate or to, I don't know, separate the wheat from the chaff of, you know, which would be well, best that's for the Curriculum pool, mapping I, is provided with, yeah. the, with the new text. Any, anytime you do a, a curriculum purchase, basically all the AZ standards are matched up and it tells you exactly what you're teaching out of with that textbook and it matches it up with the AZ standards. So then Which currently, didn't even, if I recall, didn't even exist in 2004. Right. right. Correct. So then currently, the, what we have now doesn't, won't match up with anything that with the, with the, the teachers would have had to go through a rigorous process in order saying. to be yeah. able to find right. what was in the textbook in order to match it up with yeah. the that would be, That would be the justification. Yeah. Well, the other part is this would be a continuum um, sequenced curriculum from kindergarten to 12th grade, mm -hmm. which means you know that what the kids are learning in kindergarten, now they're going to first grade and the curriculum is going to be continuous. So they're going to continue on their learning path. Right now there are so many holes um, in the way the different teachers have their own curriculum and each school has their own curriculum. I mean, it's just, there's so many holes because over the years as you change teachers, <coughs> a lot of times they bring with them whatever they were teaching at their other school. So to purchase it going all continuum and all sequenced is to the benefit of our students because now we know that the curriculum is going to be a sequence and our students are actually going to grow. Um, whereas now if they went to Pima Butte, by the time they go to Desert Wind, the elementary curriculum probably isn't aligned with the secondary curriculum. Mm -hmm. So on top of not being up to, up to peak on standards. So it's, it's both of those things that in my opinion as a teacher, our students need to have a sequence and it needs to be reinforced through all the grades. Does that help? Mm -hmm. Does that answer your questions, Dr. Miller? Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, so we have the agenda item um, to um, hopefully approve them to have their adoption committee. So do I have any motions? Motion to approve. I have a motion, do I have a second? I'll second. I have a second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. All right, thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I, I apologize about those additional questions. Again, I just oh, want to make okay. sure that the teachers are, are being listened to and their voice is the loudest in this debate. <laughs> Absolutely, thank you. All right, so moving on. Um, Item F, discussion of possible action to direct the Director of Human Resources to research the superintendent's um, search firms and the options for future board consideration. Uh, so uh, what we can do tonight um, is give direction to Mr. Beckett um, so that he can gather the various ways. Obviously, we know we have our own internal HR. We can do if we wanted board conducted, not recommended. <laughs> Um, we can do a local agency, like, uh, we can do ASBA, we could do a national um, search firm. So uh, what we can do tonight is to, to give him direction so that he can compile all that so we can have a comparison um, at, our, at our November 8th meeting so that we can sit down as a board, go through the process, go through the pros and cons and decide what direction we as a board want to take in the search process. So the agenda item is just for, um, to give him direction. Any questions? I have a question. I have a question. Yeah. Um, and maybe I don't even know what the answer would be. But is it possible? I mean, does does the HR department have to put together this list, or can our board secretary do it? 
basically it's just calling around and finding out what the cost is and what their service is offered it's so that we can compare the different costs and offerings so I, I mean I'm just I'm just questioning it's actually, know? It's Somebody recommended know? from our attorney that their HR department. Okay, do it. that's why I need to know. Yeah, it was okay. that, that was the recommendation. Okay, I'm sure Lisa's very capable of doing it, but okay, that that answers that question. And then second question: Is it possible, Mr. Beckett, if we approve this, approve you to gather that information? Is it possible that you can email it to us before the November eighth meeting so that we can actually take a look at it? so that we can come to the meeting on the 8th prepared on what our best choice is. Does that make sense? Thank you, uh, Member Anderson. Yes, um, it is gonna take some turnaround time. Anytime you're asking for a quote, especially from national firms, it's gonna take some time to get some of that information. So obviously, as soon as I get direction tonight, uh, we'll hopefully starting tomorrow, and gathering information and try to have something to you. Uh, even in your board packets, we can probably get something together by that point in time. So do you need direction from us whether you want to do national or st in state or I, do you I want to look like, at both? I would like to see the oh, whole okay. gamut. I would like to see the whole okay. gamut so that we can we can compare and just and because okay. a lot of that is really you know going to change in the scope of what they offer local versus national costs as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And it's really a very short list mm -hmm. <laughs> when you when you actually yeah. look at it of, of firms that are actually doing this uh, for Yeah in support of district so so then with the motion can we just approve for him to do that or do we need to be specific no. okay um, but can we get it before the 8th can, possibly I'll do my very best yes <laughs> can, can I just make one, <laughs> one comment to obviously uh, there are human resource departments that have handled these searches in the past yeah um, I'm offering my opinion at this point in time I don't think that's a viable solution obviously the networking yeah. that goes involved with those kind of uh, searches, it's critical that you have lots of people who've had lots of experiences in lots of different places in order to really uh, have the, uh, the impact that you're looking for in that kind of a search. So I, once again, I will put together a, a cost that we would be able to uh, incur to do that search, but again, I do not think that's a, a viable option. I agree. I agree, I don't even know if I need the cost. Yeah, I don't think you need to worry about it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> not that you're not valuable, I'm just <laughs> So I, I would like to motion um, that we um, direct uh, the director of HR to research uh, the superintendent search firms and options for uh, future board consideration. Awesome. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Public hearing. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have to have this, we have to open up a public hearing for the budget revision that has to do with the teacher, uh, our, the teacher salary increase, that, was this from the state? State. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm opening up the, uh, the hearing, the public hearing, if anybody wishes to speak. Okay. Since I, there's no one to speak, we'll close the public hearing and move on to item H. Discussion and possible approval of the fiscal year budget revision, which includes the salary increase of 1.6%. Dr. Chestnut, is there anything else you'd like to add, or Mr. Roush? Yes, I'll, uh, I'll go first, and Mr. Roush might have a few things to add. Uh, we're very happy to be able to offer this 1.06% that was allocated by the legislature, and we plan to pay it in a one, one lump sum to uh, returning teachers or teachers that taught in Arizona last year. New teachers would not be included uh, as, the le as the statute was written. And uh, also, uh, the statute is very specific that uh, it is similar to 301 funds in the sense that not every certified person will receive the 1.06%. Uh, counselors, um, some other miscellaneous positions that aren't coded with code 1000, uh, are not permitted to receive the 1.06 percent. So uh, I would assume that we'll be sending out, I know that we're planning to send out uh, an email to staff to explain that to them so there's no confusion. And I know Mr. Roush has told me that uh, our goal is to have that in the November 17th payroll as a one lump sum. Uh, if it is not possible to make that payroll and we haven't, we're not certain we can make that calculation, get it done by then, but that is the goal. If we can't, it would be December 1st but we will communicate with staff in a timely manner letting them know when they can expect that once we know for certain if we're gonna make the 17th. 
And I'm not sure if Mr. Roush has anything to add to that. I have a question. Maybe Mr. Roush can answer it or Dr. Chestnut. Has the state released the funds to us yet? That's why I was going to ask. Has the state released the funds to the school district yet? Um, well, it's, it's through an apportionment. Uh, so no. No. Okay. Yeah, but that's, that's okay. I mean, their, their overall apportionment is lagging, has been for years, so. so Do we have a guesstimate? Paid back for it. Yeah. yeah. And we have to do this work up, up front even to designate how much it is and uh, it, it's different and that's why we have to do this budget revision to give them some information too. So we had to do research. Uh, most of the research was done uh, by the HR department and uh, our payroll department in uh, the, the number of teachers that, that, that qualified and we have to have documentation for it and so. When this, when this increase was announced, was there any date that was ever provided to the schools that said you would have it by such a date? Uh, no, mm -hmm. uh, okay. just a uh, budget revision I'm just asking, date just that needed curiosity. to be, it's not my realm. <laughs> that, the, that, that needed to be approved by, so. Right. And, and school districts are doing it different ways. So we, our uh, implementation uh, is to give a lump sum, some, some are doing it a little bit differently. But. Are some districts just putting it uh, added to their paycheck for the mm -hmm. year? Mm -hmm. oh. um. it, there's no one way to do it. So that'd be frustrating, wouldn't it? Right. That that next year, the next year, go back to nothing. <laughs> yeah. Right, and it is a one time. Mm -hmm. It's just one time. Well, it's one is, time for two years. Right? Is there any recourse? Yeah. 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 Right. In, in that event, if, what? if we don't get it. Oh, oh no, they could sue them. It's a state law, okay. so yeah. I'm just. Let's do that again. So. <laughs> <laughs> Since we were so that successful. Was so much fun. <laughs> so we'll get it this year. We'll get it. I just want to make a motion if we're unless we're done, or any, any more. Any other discussion? discussion? I, I'm surprised it's not more. Well. But I just my only. Mm -hmm. That's my only. I I I know there's strict um, rules on how it can be applied. So and did you finally get all the rules on that? Okay. All right. Well, I'd like to make a motion um, to approve uh, the approval of the fiscal year 2017-18 uh, budget reversion revision for 1.06% uh, for teacher salary increase. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Our last item of the evening, adjournment. Do I have a motion? A motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. Se All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We are in German. It is 818. And don't go away. We have forms to sign, please.